Hey, what's up, everyone? Uh, Chip Walters here again. Uh, and if you haven't figured us out now, you'll you'll know that uh, uh, I'm a firm believer that textures are the key to making realistic uh, realistic renderings. Here's this thing fully light, lit map uh, baked. P pretty nice job, I might say, uh, in terms of the uh, the new the new engine that is. <laughs> not the design or anything like that, but yeah, so textures are really key. So you got to figure out how to build your own textures. That's that's one of the goals here. So uh, to do that, uh, I've got this workflow that I want to share with you. It's not the only workflow. In fact, I looked at a lot of different things. I'm, I'm a, I know about Substance. I know about Quixel. Quixel, they both have great things. I know about uh, 3D Code. Of course, I've got a bunch of videos on 3D Code. Um, but what I'm looking for is something really quick and dirty, something I can get in and get out, not have to learn a whole new program, subscribe to things and all that stuff. I want something fast. And this is really kind of what I've come up with. Right. So the company I've I'm working, uh, the product I purchased is called Pixplant. And it's kind of a silly name, but uh, it's a pretty cool product. Actually, uh, what it is, it's a uh, it's a, a standalone tool that allows you to uh, it's got a very smart uh, tiler. So you can tile any texture you want. Uh, and not only does it have a great tiler, but it also has uh, great tools for extracting different kinds of, of you can get uh, bump maps, uh, normal maps, uh, displacement maps, specular maps, uh, ambient occlusion maps. So you can get all these things. And these are all things, of course, we know that Unity uh, needs when they want when it wants to create a, 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 a material. So <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about, uh, if you get it, I bought the freelancer version. It's only $49. I think it's a great deal for that. And I have to say, Algorithmic had a, a tiling product years ago that was a couple hundred bucks that this thing does at least as good as that. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty impressive product. Um, they also have the seeds. These are places you can go to download free images. I'm going to actually... Uh, use an image. I'm going to try and use an image that I took a picture of this afternoon. See how that turns out. And then we'll, uh, so I, I, yeah, I use my smartphone when I was out having uh, dinner with my father at Fuddruckers and I saw, I saw a picture of a, of a, of a wall that I wanted to try. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So here I've opened up Pixplant and, uh, I'm kind of uh, staring at this interface. Uh, one of the things I have to say is there's like two or three very short tutorials on the web. Uh, by I, I assume is the author of this product and they did a stunning job just a stunning job in explaining it so I won't be able to, to do it as well I'll be moving kind of quickly so uh, definitely check those out if you're interested so the key thing here is that this is your this is the this is where you start with the importing textures and this is the texture you're going to create so I'm going to go ahead and go load seed from file and I'm going to find an image that I liked let's see I think it might have been that one, or let's see if there's any. Yeah, maybe it's one of these. Yeah, let's try this one. So, so that's the picture I took. You can see it's a little bit wonky. So, for, for, uh, if I hit generate right now, uh, it says 120. This is what I've been using. Uh, I, I, I dissected a few of the the best Unity scenes and. If you have that secondary map, you can get by with this 124 by 1024. You can use bigger maps for, for hero products. But for environment stuff, this works pretty good. So I'm going to hit OK. And you see that, OK, wow, that's that's kind of cool. Uh, it already did it. It tiled it. Let's hit this button. And now you can see I can zoom in and zoom out. And you can start to see that, yeah, it kind of tiled it, but there's some there's some problems. I hit the wrong stop button. Quit the, quit the, uh, I quit the... Uh, uh, I <laughs> quit the video record. Okay, so let's go into the seed wizard thing, right? So this is really where we're going to try and straighten out some of the problems with this. So as you can see, it's already recognized automatically that we're a little bit askew and it tried to correct it. Actually, it looks pretty good. Uh, the next is going to try and identify if there's any like obvious tiles. And I don't see that there are any and it doesn't either. So I'm going to say no pattern and say finish so now it changes the seed so now i'm going to hit generate again and and i have to keep going back to this mode to look and if you look at this there's these there's a couple dark ones right here together that you're starting to see that i don't like so uh what i'll do is if i see them in here like this one these right here i'm gonna just i'm gonna drag them i'll say 
generate. So I'm going to, but, but when I hit generate, it's generating the same ones in there. So what I can do is I can say, hit something like horizontal or 180, 180. Sometimes 180 will give me something different. Yeah, in this case, it's not getting anything different. So what I really need to do now is find those particular, uh, those particular boxes over in here where it might be, let's see, where the, <laughs> that's like a, a, a puzzle. Okay, I think I think they're right here. I think it's not all three of them. I think it's these these guys. So I'm gonna basically I'm gonna hide those. Okay, come back over here, grab these, and when I hit these over here and I regenerate, it puts something else over here, right? So it doesn't look very good. Uh, so I'm gonna take this whole row and generate that and see what happens. Yeah, that looks better. So and then I think I've got let's let's hit this again. Yeah, that's actually not bad. Um, let me see if there's anything else I might want to play with. I think these real dark ones right here. So I'm going to look over here and try and find another real dark one. I think there might be this one here. I'll hide that one. Is there another dark one in here? Let's see. Let's take this. Generate that. Yeah, i got another dark one, I guess. Let's take this one out. This one out. We're just going to remove some of the dark ones over here. This one out. This one out. Let's see what happens now. Oops, I generate a whole new new batch, which is not what I want to do, uh, unless it's unless it's good. No, it's got that long, It's got those lines in there. So I'm going to undo that. There. And let's let's just generate this guy right here. Let's get him out of there. Uh, well, I can always move around like this. Okay, let's generate both of these. So, and there's still here's here we are. There's still something out here. There we go. Now let's look at that. Yeah, so that doesn't work. This there's, there's a lot of mess in here. So I'm gonna let's leave this the way it is and hit generate again. So it tries to get it all cleaned up. Let's hit the Let's hit this, zoom out. Yeah, I can live with that. So let's go ahead and, and, and stay with that. Now we're going to go to extract 3D maps, right? So that's the next thing we do. So we hit this extract button. We're going to get diffuse, displacement, normal, specular, and ambient occlusion. We, we want all of those. We hit the extract button. Uh, and uh, so this is showing, actually, uh, this is what it came in originally. You can see that, that the... Uh, that it needed to be inverted when you look at this actual it doesn't work i hit this invert button it works a lot better i don't want a lot of fine detail uh, but uh i do want that surface scale because as you can see you know it just gets really lumpy if i don't jack that all the way up and the fine detail i'm going to add a little more fine detail later on but for now i'm going to stay with that so that's my displacement and it'll actually calculate the normal off of that too here's our <clears throat> specular from texture map so uh, uh, we don't non-metallic, but we don't want color, so we do unsaturated. If we had color, we might be doing metallic workflow, so that would be with color. Brighter areas in the source are more reflective. That makes sense. The brighter they are, the more reflective they are. Hit OK. This is an uh, uh, this is basically the ambient occlusion. Now, if you're doing something flat, like a concrete stone, a floor, or something like that, you would jack this all the way up. But we're not doing something fat and flat. And remember that also, you know, we can always adjust these in Unity. We can always adjust them back. Can't add more ambient occlusion, but we can always add less. So I tend to kind of like overdo it in this thing. Uh, and uh, this this tells you like, you know, you can see how many how many casts ray casts you're running. So I, you know, this this looks pretty good right here. So okay. So basically, this is our scene. Uh, uh, I've got a uh, I've got this, you know, this is a, uh, a cylinder with our map onto it. I can UV it three times, two times, one time. This is good for seeing if there's any kind of tiling. There's a little tiling going on, but for the most part, you know, right, right click, by the way, allows you to move around. Left click turns it. Middle button uh, actually moves the lighting around, right? You can use a cylinder, use a box, a plane. Plane is kind of nice for this one. Especially uh, gives you an idea of what it might end up looking like. Um, 
and even a ball so you can get all those things so I'm gonna go back to cylinder the reason why I like cylinder is because I like to be able to look at the specular lighting and see how it goes so the first thing I'll, I'll go into is I'm gonna I'm gonna turn off my diffuse I'm gonna turn off my AO I'm gonna turn off my specular even I actually leave the specular on I'm gonna leave these on and what I'm trying to do is get a feel for for exactly how how big this is right so let's go into here you're starting to see that that may be pretty close so I'll go to my displacement tab <coughs> the range as I collapse this it gets more and more collapsed you can see in fact if I turn off specular we might get a better idea what this looks like but I may want it you know I may want it something like this I may want to see it you know a little farther out even though I'm not going to use the displacement map this is what's going to drive the normal map here's the normal map the normal map the only thing difference anything I set in the displacement map uh, the only thing difference that I can set in the normal map is uh, the scale button so I can hit the scale and I can add add a little bit more into it so um, so these are interesting right I can actually basically make everything smooth make it all sharp but I can reset this and in this particular case what I'm going to do is I'm going to make the fine low low and the medium low and the large low and the very large higher so I'm going to have that and then I'll take this and move it all the way to the end sharp so what I'm getting is I'm getting a lot of texture on the rock but if you zoom in in the middle of it it's kind of smooth in there right so maybe I need to maybe not quite that much texture yeah something like that that looks probably pretty good let's turn my specular back on and you can see that it's pretty shiny stuff like a fresh coat of paint even though it didn't have a fresh roll paint so let's look at specular so let's talk about specular for a second so remember that our specular chart shows that non-metals are in between these colors it's 40 to 75 this is this is of a 255 0 to 255 so it's a very limited range of the specular right the gloss is different right so we're showing both here so what I want to do is I want to get this so that it shows I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna map it as if it were gloss and I'm gonna show you how I do that uh, and then we're gonna tweak it in Photoshop to get it to get it get the right specular so if I go to the adjustments here and say the, uh, look at the intensity um, you can see I can I can jack it down the black means there's not going to be any right so if I go all the way down to none there's no it's just pure flat so I'm gonna go back to something like this maybe punch up the contrast a little bit and if I don't want perfectly exactly the same reflections on all these different things I can go to the sharpen tool and I can just hit just a couple areas like this and then come back to the adjustment and then maybe pump, punch up the contrast a little bit and now I've got you know now I'm getting a little bit different kinds kinds of reflections so I'm gonna leave that the way it is and inclusion same thing I can make it lighter or darker I turn it on you'll see it if I turn all of these on we're gonna kind of get a, a picture Ambient inclusion is definitely too dark. Let's light it up a little bit there. So that looks good. It looks like we still got too much specular, but I'm gonna mess with that in uh, in Photoshop. But I think that's not a bad a bad start right here. So what I'll do is I'll say file. Uh, I'm gonna create a project. I'm gonna call it Stone Wall. I already had one because I tried one earlier, and we'll replace that. And then I'm going to say file save all so now what it just did is it created in that same folder it created a ping for each one of these a ping for diffuse displacement normal specular and ambient occlusion as we talked about earlier we need to have more than a ping for diffuse we need to have a PSD so I'm going to go in here hit this button choose PSD you see I already have one but I'm going to save over top of that and let's go to specular same thing save as PSD and we're done with that okay let's go find these in uh, unity okay here we are in unity just loaded in our new new maps so first I'm gonna take something like oh let's get my concrete uh, here's a concrete texture now let's do let's do shiny floor I'm gonna duplicate that one I'm gonna call this stone wall 
Okay, and I'll look at it. Let's take a look at that. I'm going to get rid of these the detail maps because I don't want to look at those right away. I want uh, my normal map to be 1. No height map. Occlusion is at 1. Everything looks good. Okay, so now I just need to basically take this same stone wall. Oops. Uh, oops, I'm sorry, I think, I think it's here. Stone wall, and let's just start mapping to some stuff. Here, here, and here. And now I need to add the texture. So, uh, first, here's our diffuse map. Oh, that looks weird. I'm going to delete that. I'm going to create a new one. Stone wall. Yeah, let's go back to uh, here. Go diffuse, save as Stonefall PSD, save. Okay. Uh, let's see what's going on. I don't know what that is. Why, why would that be doing that? Well, let's take our, our uh, specular map. That's our PSD. Well, let's just hook all these up first. Let's just go to let's go to the stone wall. Here, lock that, and we're going to take the diffuse, put it in the albedo channel. We're going to take the uh, specular, put it here. Normal goes in here. Actually, I'm going to take the diffuse, this diffuse, that one obviously screwed up. We can build one from it. I'm not worried about that. Uh, and the displacement map, I don't need that. The specular. That's the PSD. I want that one there. And the that's it, right? We've got we don't need height. So I think that's it. So that's pretty much what we got. You can see that uh, the normal map is set up. You can see some of the reflectivity. It's not quite right, right? So let's go ahead and fix all this. So I'm gonna basically uh, Grab this diffuse, open it up, and then I'm going to grab this. That's a ping, so I need to update that. Then the specular, which is the PSD, open this up. Okay, so let's go back to our map. Okay, so our specular needs to be in these in these colors, right? So I'm I, right now I'm I'm kind of out of those colors. So I'm going to take all this, control all, control all, control C. I'm going to create a alpha channel, paste it in that because that's going to be that's going to be our smoothness map right down here. So that's going to be, that spans the whole range, right? So, but our specular map, this one is, has to, has to have a little, it is, it's going to need to be darker, right? So I'm going to just drag this down till it's about somewhere like that. Maybe move this up a little bit. So that's, that's our specular map right there. It's going to be something like that. So if we look at this, you can see we're we're about in the right area. Okay. Okay. And uh, let's go back to the alpha channel here. This one. Select all. Control C. Uh, deselect. And I'm going to save this. And I'm going to go into this one. And I'm going to create an alpha channel here. And paste. And I need to save this. Remember, that's our, our gloss channel there. I'm going to save this as a Photoshop file. There it is. Looks right for me. But yeah, let's save that. And let's go back to uh, uh, Unity. And now, Specular, we're using the uh, Specular Alpha. And, and our diffuse is all correct now let's drag him up in here okay so you can see that uh you know we don't have any real depth because we're using um uh you know so we don't have we're not using a height map let's go ahead and put that displacement map in here and take a look at that so if i put that in here oops undo yeah, I think I think that displacement map's all kind of 
kind of wonky too. No, it's not. Okay. Sometimes the displacement map will be, uh, if you put it in some in another channel, it's going to change it. So uh, I'm going to go the displacement map is here, the height map. Oh, you know what? I don't know if I put the stone wall normal. Did I put that in there? I guess I did. Let me double click on the stone wall normal. Make sure it's right. Yep, that's right. Okay. Okay, so now I put the displacement map in. Now notice what happens when I add that, start messing with that displacement map. You can see it starts doing this weird thing where it kind of gets all fuzzy. So I, I don't use displacement maps for that. So I'm going to go in here, take that, delete it, and leave it like that. And the last thing I need to do here is I need to add in secondary maps, right? So you can see as we come through here, it's kind of okay, but uh, we really need need to have some secondary maps to pull this thing off. Actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to jack up, jack with these smoothness tools a little bit off too. So, uh, so let's go ahead and go to my concrete diffuse and concrete normal. There we go. And now, as we render these out, we start to see that as you get closer, they actually start to work a lot better. Yep. Uh, problem is that I've got the wrong tiling set, so let's try one, one. Eh, that's a little better. Or maybe five, five. Let's see. Sometimes you just got to play with this to get to the right, the right number that's going to make that secondary map work for you as you get closer. Yeah. Maybe one one is right. That's five five. So anyway, as we look around, that looks pretty good. Lastly, what we'll do is I'm just going to change this one. How do I change this so it's different from those? Uh, that's simple. I just go into the stone wall material, duplicate it, call it stone wall, small wall. Drag it on there, of course, and again adjust the tiling. Oops, wrong one. Uh, unlock that. Still a small ball. Okay, now we go. There you go. So now we're adjusting the tiling a little better. Still a cube map, which is not particularly great for that. Might be better for that for this back here, but you get the idea. So. As you get closer, it works pretty good. Even 2020 at 1 1, this is, you know, I might make this 2 2. It's uh, rendering, those splotches are from, I think, from the rendering. Also, my inclusion map might be a little high. Let's look, at, let's look back on this, these walls here. Uh, and let's look at this occlusion map. if it doesn't adjust it at all. Ah, shoot. Can't tell. Occlusion uh, map. The occlusion wasn't very dark, so didn't have too much of an effect on it. I think I think we're pretty happy with where we're at. So anyway, hopefully this has been helpful. Uh, it's a workflow that I pretty much uh, uh, have figured out that works really fast for me. It gives me some pretty decent PBR uh, materials uh, without a whole lot of hassle. Um, and uh, there, it turns out, you know, searching around, it's hard to find good Unity PBR materials. I, I downloaded some from the from the uh, from the the site, and it was depressing <laughs> how, how bad some of these materials are. So hopefully this is helpful and hopefully you get something out of it. Uh, anyway, we'll have some more tutorials as uh, coming up in not too distant future. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye.